All right, people, what is up and welcome back. Today we're back out here on the boat. And uh, as you can tell, it's not the crack of dawn, big old rain clouds behind me, but it's actually probably around 8, 8.30. And uh, yeah, we decided to sleep in this morning because there was big storms off in the distance. They were supposed to pass over, but as you can see, they did not pass over. Big giant clouds everywhere, it's still raining. But the nice part is, it is completely glass. So, not much wind. We're gonna go out here and try to catch some fish, see what we can get into. Y'all stick with it, stay tuned, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Let's go. We pulled to the first fishing spot, been out here about 20 minutes, and there comes the storm. Wind picked up, blowing like crazy. I think we're about to get wet. We got on the frog dogs. We're gonna ride out, no lightning, so it's okay. So it's been about two hours, I'd say, we've been fishing. We pulled to the first spot, it was raining, it was bad weather. Um, but we caught, I think, one, I caught one little flounder, two undersized reds, and one trout. So uh, on the boat, there's a Texas slam, all undersized, but still cool. I didn't record much, because it was, like I said, it was raining. Uh, then now we ran out to the jetties. The idea behind the jetties right now is that in the Houston Galveston area, we've had a lot of rain the last few weeks, and, or last week actually. So a lot of the bay probably has quite a bit of fresh water in it. it. Doesn't really affect the fishing that much. I don't know if we've had enough to affect it, but the jetties are gonna have the highest salinity right now. So, so when there's a lot of rain, a lot of the times the fish will flee out to the jetties uh, and get in that saltier water. So we're out of the jetties now and the water actually looks pretty nice. Still cloudy. There's a storm over that way. It was lightning a minute ago, but it looks like it's it up a little bit fingers crossed but we're gonna head out to the part where the rocks start to break up and see if we can catch some stop or something all right guys well we moved out uh i think we're eight miles off now at this little rig i got a bit right here on the bottom just throwing the live shrimp down oh, dude it's a little snapper thing it is right. look at there there we go got this kind of little shrimp right on bottom and then uh we got the big rod out here. We didn't bring the big y'all shore rods or anything, but I got my big casting rod out here with a, or my big spinning rod with the live bait drifting around. There we go. Pretty cool. Toss him back. Down he goes. Hey guys, so we're in like 40 feet of water right here. At least that's what it says. So what I'm doing is I got a little two ounce weight here. This is just a croaker hook. I didn't have any other hooks. I'm just taking the shrimp and I'm threading it through the body. We did not plan on doing this today, so we didn't bring any gear for this. But just trout rods. And a little bit of luck. All right, let's see. Good thing with this weight is I can toss it right up next to the piling. Well, that didn't work, but I can toss it right next to the piling and it'll sink down pretty straight. There's quite a bit of current today ripping that way. We'll get this down there, we're almost on bottom. There's bottom, lock it. And it shouldn't take long to get bit. Yep, there's a bite right there. Can I reel yours up and move to the other side? Yep. I'm getting bit, but... Well, yours is way over here. Oh, you got a fish. All right, well, I went to reel his up and there's a fish on here. Something decent, it feels like. Guess we'll see, it could be a cat. Whoa, whoa, hey, I got one on this rod. Can you catch that? My rod's doubling over in the rod holder. I'm fighting this fish. What is this? Ugh. Oh, it's not what we want. What is it, hardhead? Catfish, yeah. Gaff top. Pop the hook out of this thing. Y'all can see the water's pretty nice out here today. You can see this fish way down there. That's crazy. We'll get this thing unhooked and get back out there. He's off. Probably gonna get eaten on the way down. There he is, there's a shark. Get your life easy. I got fish. As soon as it hit the bottom. Oh, it's fighting good. Let's see. A little snapper thing, maybe? Digging down? It is. Let's bet on another shrimp right here. Looks like we got five or six left. 
Okay, we're gonna drop this shrimp down here. We're running low on shrimp. Drop this down here, we're gonna see how quick we can get bit again. Oh, shoot, yeah. The rod, no, you can get it. Okay, he's on his rod up there, just a piece of cut ladyfish. Got him. Just hit bottom on this thing. There's a bite. There it was. Missed him. Okay, we just hit bottom again. Got him. Oh boy. This one feels better than the last one. But you never know. What is that? Hey, I caught a drum. Little black drum. Just catching everything out here, guys. Let's get this guy on hook, get back down and see what else there is. Okay, well, species number three. Let's get another shrimp going. So I'm running back down with this little mangled up piece of cut ladyfish that we caught earlier. Oh, I'm already bit. Oh, I got bit on the late on the way down on that ladyfish. Came off. Damn. Don't know what bit that guy's, but tore it up on the way down. Okay, we're on the bottom. There's a bite. Got it. So much fun pulling fish out of deeper water with a little rod. What do we think it is here? Oh yes, exactly what we want on our cut lady fish. Hard head. He's coming up. Is he? Yeah. Okay, he's hooked right in the corner. Ah, oh, he's not ready. Oh my gosh, y'all. I think he's starting to get tired. Perfect. Turned super slow right there. He did. Okay. Careful, careful, careful. He got a gap get him. Got There's a shark down there. Careful. Here, net him, net him, net him. No, he's barely hooked, he's barely hooked. Guys, there's a little shark. There's a shark right there. He ain't gonna do nothing. That shark's not big enough, I don't think. But this guy's hooked right in the corner of the nose. This thing's bigger than the shark, I'll tell you that. That's what you came for, though, right? We were talking about this earlier. Larry at the other rig. Come on, baby. We need a salmon net. Lead him on over. No, one, one more set. time. I can't, I can't, one more time. Here it comes. <sighs> Little dude. This fish is literally way bigger than the shark. This one slowly, slowly. He, is, he does not want that net. Do I need to go up front? Close, close. 
Start coming around one more time. I don't know how the GoPro's even still on. Dude, he's scared of the net. I think you have I to. Don't blame him. I think you have to pull it out of the water and dump it back in quick. I'm, I'm afraid to scare him. And go crazy and lose it. Yeah, maybe you should come up to this side. No, because then. Oh, he was in it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. The hook's threaded through his fin or through his. Get his head. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Well, y'all, look at this fish right here. A freaking cobia. My first one ever. We're offshore in the Bayboat right now. I'm so happy, but at the same time, it's like bittersweet because the GoPro I have it on loop mode, which means that every five minutes it recirculates the video. So I got the last five minutes of the fight and the net, but I didn't get the hook set. But basically what happened is I threw in a big old live croaker that I caught a minute ago because he didn't want the other bait. Came up, smacked it, went running, let him eat, set the hook, and just fought this thing for 15 minutes it must have been, right? 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. But he's in the boat now and that's what matters. <laughs> Can you believe that? I can't believe this. Wow. This is nuts. We beat the water like five times. This thing just kept coming back and circling. Switch the bait is. out. Switch the bait. Put the live croaker on. <laughs> and he ate man. the heck out of it. Good job, Cameron. Right in the top. <clears throat> on the big old spinning rod that I brought for catching jacks. But man, I wish I would have got the hook set because it was beautiful. But oh well. Uh, thank God we got this thing. I've never caught one of these before, guys. Shoot, we just ran out here on a whim. We were at the other rig of my desk, so let's head out. Eight miles off the beach at this little rig right here. That's a Kobe in the boat. <laughs> okay, so Kobe have to be 40 inches. Our thing goes to 38, right there to the mouth. That's 38. Easy 40, that has to be a 42 at least. Guys, my first Kobe, Ling, whatever you call them. Crazy, look how beautiful that fish is. Let's see what else we can catch. Let's put them in the cooler. Usually on my first fish I ever caught, I'd let them go. You can't let this kind of thing go. That's crazy. Farmer so long, he would've been dead anyways. We're gonna throw them in the cooler, get them on ice quick. Beautiful fish. <laughs> Well, it's been about 30 minutes since we caught that fish and we're about to head in. Wind picked up just a little bit out here. We have like, I don't know, eight miles off the beach, all the way to the dike. We're like 15 miles away, something like that. So we're gonna head in. Uh, definitely happy with this fish in the cooler right here. We'll see y'all back at the house to clean this thing up and then cook it up. This is probably the coolest catch and cook ever on this channel. All right, so we just got back to the boat shed after a long day of fishing. And y'all know the worst part about any fishing trip is cleaning the boat when it's super hot outside, you're super tired. But my friends over at Better Boat sent me some stuff to help get the job done nice and quick. So they hooked up with a nice deck brush right here, a super strong extension pole, some special boat soap, concentrate, and then a uh, boat eraser right here. So we're gonna show you how good this stuff works. We just got done cleaning the boat. Every single thing Better Boat sent me worked like a charm. If you want to pick yourself up some stuff from betterboat.com, I will have everything linked down below. And if you do decide to get some, make sure that you use that link because if you do, I will receive a small commission off of every single purchase that you make, which just goes right back into helping the channel and helping make more videos. So make sure to check them out, pick some stuff up to help clean your boat, kayak, really whatever you have. Okay, we're back at the house right now. We have our fish here. We're gonna clean it up. So I've never done this before, but pretty much all fish are the same. We're gonna start right here behind the fin and we're gonna go up into the head. I don't know where, really where to go here, but we're just gonna learn as we go. Okay, there we go. Now we're just gonna take our knife, you can come around to this side. Okay, now we're gonna go down to, make sure we're all the way down to the backbone right there. We're just gonna turn our knife and start following the spine. Man, you could probably use a serrated knife for this to cut through the skin. And make sure we can feel it. 
think we're pretty close. Okay, now that we have our first cut, we're just gonna take our knife, run it in there and start making these cuts deeper as we go. We're just going up and over the backbone and back down the other side. Okay, we're almost at the bottom here. We're just going to go ahead and tight through. All the way down. Come back over. We can lift up our filet. Let me flip the fish around. One last cut right here, we should have it off. All right, there is a whole entire cobia filet. Probably the biggest fish I've ever filleted. Not too bad either, we didn't leave much meat on the bones. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side and then we'll take the skin off of it. We just got off our other filet and this one looks pretty good too. Not the prettiest, but definitely a big filet. And I didn't realize how much head meat there was on these guys. So on the first one, as you can see, I missed a little bit, but cut me some slack. I just that's my first time. Now we're gonna go down to the guts we're gonna see what this thing's been eating because I like doing that on all these fish. It looks like it may have a full belly right here. So, it's just cool to see what they eat. I'm just gonna cut all this out. There it is. Crab, it's crabs. Little baby crab right there. Let's see what else is in here. There's definitely something else. What is that? Oh, a fish. That is a... I don't know what that is. A chunk of fish. Can't tell what it is. Maybe a shad or something. I don't know. Pretty hard. I don't know. Not my croaker that it ate, but that's cool. So there you go. A crab and a chunk of, big old chunk of fish right here. Pretty neat. Let's go ahead and take the skin off of these fillets. Okay, so what I'm doing right here is I'm just cutting it down the middle and going off each side, basically getting two loins like you see people doing some big fish. But it's crazy how firm this fish is. First impression, it's super firm, like hard. Crazy. Looks good though, super white meat too. So we're about to cook up some of this fish for dinner right here. One thing I noticed that was really cool whenever we were cleaning it is that afterwards my hands really didn't smell like fish that much. And then if you stick your nose right here in the bag, it really has no fishy smell at all. I just thought that was really cool. And also, if you take a look at it, super, super firm. But yeah, pretty much no fishy smell, which is something crazy because if you clean a trout or something like that, it's stuck on your hands all day. Just thought I'd tell you that. Anyways, we're gonna cook this up. We're doing two different things. I'm gonna show you what we're doing. Okay, so the grill's super hot right now. We're about to put on this fish. What we have here is a little bit of marinated cobia right here and then our zucchini that we're gonna grill. But on this cobia, what we're using is some Korean barbecue sauce. We like to make cross-cut ribs a lot and this stuff is amazing on them. So we decided to put down the cobia because while we did have a bunch of fillets and squares, we also made cobia ribs. I'll show you that one right here. So we took the cobia up near the front where the ribs are and cut them into cobia ribs. So these all have a big old rib bone running through them. They have really big bones. So pretty neat like that. Got a few of these in here and then a couple of fillets. But yeah, so we grilled those up as if they were Korean crosscut ribs. So the fish has been going for about five minutes at close to 400 degrees. We're gonna flip it right here. Take this, this is one of the ribs. Just gonna roll it over on its side. Ooh, nice and crisp on the bottom. Looks like a rib. Let's put it out there in the middle on the fire. And these are a couple fillets right here that we can flip. Perfect. And I'll tell you what, I'm impressed. This fish stays together super well, super firm. So the fish has been cooking probably about eight to 10 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and take it off here. Looking super good. Got a nice crisp line. This is a big old rib right here. Ooh, yeah. Big old piece of fish. A little bit of stickage, but not much. Let's see if we can get this one up. Use a spatula if you got to. Got another rib right here, and y'all check that out. Tell me that doesn't look like a pork rib right there. Really good, juicy, nice sticky barbecue sauce. 
So we're just sitting down to eat dinner. I got two awesome looking plates right here. We have some smoked speckled trout dip from the last video. I didn't make this in the video, but I did smoke the fish in it. So if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. I'll have it linked at the end of this video. And then right here, we have our plate for today with our couple Cobio ribs, some grilled zucchini, and then some uh, air fried corn, surprisingly. So we're gonna see how that is. But let's get the Cobio taste and get a first impression here. So this is one of the ribs right here. We'll go for this piece. You can see the big old rib bone come out. And that is super good, wow. With the Korean barbecue, perfectly sweet, meat still flaky. I mean, it's just perfect, y'all. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this plate and then I'll see y'all in a minute to wrap up the video. Well, there y'all go right there. That is the whole video. A super good day of fishing. That one fish made the whole day worth it. Guys, we've had some awesome weather recently, really low winds and pretty much no waves at all flat calm surf and the weather is supposed to stay like that for the next few days at least so get out there take advantage of it go catch you some fish cook you some fish that's what it's all about guys and thank you all so much for watching if you made it this far in the video don't forget to go down there hit that like button leave a comment and subscribe if you're not already and if you are like always thank you guys so much also i just want to mention that i started a patreon recently where i go over weekly fishing forecasts on the water fishing reports we do giveaways over there and just stuff like that so if you're interested in that kind of stuff make sure to go check it out and a big thank you to everyone that already has that's all i have for y'all today until next time peace